And hello there, Smashers. It seems that everything is in working order for the uh, stream I am doing today. And I am trying to make the um, look of the stream a lot more enjoyable to the eye, a lot more presentable, a lot more understanding of what's going on in works to try to improve my streaming coming into the 2019 year. And this is where it starts. I've currently not been attending many tournaments as of recent, besides the two that I went to, the Start Smash Ultimate, because of the fact that I am um, currently out of the States. I'm currently in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands, training literally in the mountains, you can kind of see. It's a bit rainy today, but you can kind of see the training in the mountains aspect, trying to get better at Ultimate, and keeping up with everything that's going on Ultimate news-wise. So, on that, today we are going to be talking about the upcoming Let's Make a Moves tournament in the New Jersey area, I believe it is. And this is a very big tournament. This is going to be one of the... They consider um, Don't Park on the Grass in Washing the first real major, and I give them credit for that. It was a 500-plus person event. Very big, very great. But this is the first one that a lot of big players from Smash 4 will be coming out. We're dealing with people such as Tweak, Nairo, Light, DeBuzz, Samsora, the list goes on. This is going to be the first real test of what we're going to see in the early steps of the Ultimate Meta. So I feel it's going to be big if we start um, doing the predictions as soon as possible. Keep in mind, these are just predictions factoring into my opinions. They don't. This is based off of the Smash GG bracket, based off of my edits throughout the bracket, based off of upsets. So, none of this is like exactly what Smash GG has written down. If you want to see what Smash GG has, feel free to go to their website. I pull a lot of my information from there, such as past tournaments, um, the seeding of the players, where they're from, and the areas that they compete in. And I 100% rec recommend using Smash GG for any of your um, future events that you may be hosting, or, that, or if you want to recommend it to your weeklies. It's just a real great website to give that kind of information out from. So, I'm going to kind of skim over this little pool upset area. These are just some upsets on this page that are dealing with pools. And I generally don't like to talk about these in great detail because this is a place where it's very hard to predict, especially in the early phases of Smash Ultimate. You never really know what to expect from something such so new in the meta. There's this has been a huge game full of upsets and craziness as people try to learn about these new characters, the new mechanics. You just don't know how well a player from either Super Smash Bros. Melee, 64, Brawl, or Smash 4 will adjust to the change in mechanics. So it's very hard, I would say, to predict this, and this is kind of just me just taking a random shot in the dark, per se. Um, because there isn't a lot of results on a lot of these players yet. I can look at their past results on Smash GG, and I can look at VODs that I find, or whatever I see on Twitch. So, from that, I try to give my best interpretation of the data in a way that makes sense. So, if you want to look at this, there's just a few upsets here. Um, Marshall over Dark Blues on Switching Frozen and Vinny, if there's a switch, that means there's an upset, and they just simply switch places within the top 64 bracket. So I have Frozen beating Vinny, because I don't really know who Vinny is currently playing in this game. It could be Sheik, it could be Rosaluma, it could be something completely different. I just don't know right now. What I do know is Frozen, um, Apollo Tenamane, um, did very well at the most recent Xeno Weekly, and that I have data on him to support the fact that he has already proven a decent role in this game even from his previous experience as a core and main in Smash 4. Um, I also switch Smock and Dill. Um, I believe I put Dill into the winner side. Dill, I have a lot more information on as a Diddy Kong player, but Smock actually has pretty good results as a Ganondorf in this game, previously a Cloud in Smash 4. And with that, I feel that just the matchup per se, Diddy Kong Ganondorf, I understand matchups can't be that big at this point in the meta since matchups haven't really developed and are understood by people, that I would just give it to Dill and the matter of fact that they're both very solid, same level of play in Smash 4, and I feel like Diddy Kong has tools with Fair, Back Air, Banana, just to space out Ganondorf and his heavy play. Now, if you're too aggressive with the matchup, it could obviously be a complete blowout by Smock, because if Dill just tries to 
that you're going on Gannon, you're just going to have a bad time. He's someone you're going to want to try the space out. So that's how that works. Um, besides this, I don't want to go over all of these because some of them aren't really big things. I will mention that um, Swishing Witches and Vanilla, I'll say somewhat big, big, that would be um, the winner's finals of pools, Wishes being an inkling main from the Pennsylvania area, and Vanilla being the Greninja player in Smash 4 from the New York area. And Vanilla will be a very interesting prospect in this tournament, considering the fact that he really wants to push the Greninja meta. A lot of people in America, at least, don't believe in this Greninja meta, but if you go to um, my Twitter page at MrPurpleCT, or if you just look on Twitter at any Smash news, especially out of Japan, you'll see that Greninja is actually ranked higher than anywhere in America has him ranked. They have him ranked as a top tier character, possibly close to top five. Greninja just has this kind of speed and kind of combo ability that could really be useful in pushing the meta forward. And that will be somewhere where America will actually catch up is that there will be more Greninja players as time progresses. It's just a very difficult character that Japan seems to have taken a lot more into their playstyle before the American playstyle. Because you deal with two very different playstyles in Smash 4, uh, in Smash 4 at least, from what I am basing my knowledge off of as a previous competitive player in that area, that Japan and the US are two completely different metas. They can overcross, and you can see Japanese players destroy American players, or American players destroy really good Japanese players. But it's just a matter that it's very different. You'll see a lot of more diverse mid to low tiers in America, in Japan, such as um, Villager was a very popular character and in um, Japan. And that's just one of the many examples you'll have of what to expect between a Japanese and American meta, is that there is going to be differentiation. And... They say Inkling's number one, just like many U.S. people think Inkling's number one. So at the same time, there'll be many similar ideas and thoughts. So on that, I'm just going to go right into top 64. That'll be easier for us to talk about. Um, so I'm going to talk with uh, Pool B1. This one, I try to list as many of the characters that um, people play as possible in order to um, best represent... Um, what to expect from their player choice. So I'm going to start with uh, Light versus Dill. Um, Light being a fox, Dill being Diddy Kong. I feel like Light just has um, a more superior um, knowledge of the game at this point. Light has already proven very well that he's very good based off his um, first place performance at NYXL, beating players such as uh, Nairo and um, Tweak. And he has a lot of potential to be a possible a top 10, possible top 5 right now coming into the um, first season of Smash Ultimate. He at least has shown that Fox is still very relevant in this meta, considering the fact that many people do not see Fox as this level of play. Um, next we have a uh, Tommen versus ZD. Um, Tommen is the uh, Bayo player previously known as Mistake, as many of you would rather remember him by. Um, Still pulling out the classic Bayo as it seems at this time, and going up against ZD in this matchup, who is going Fox as well. ZD from the Maryland, Virginia area has done pretty well for himself in Fox in Smash 4, and wants to do it again in um, Smash Ultimate. And I can't blame him, considering Fox seems to actually be way more dominant than previously expected, as mentioned with Light. Um, but I still do feel that Tommen is on another level compared to ZD, and I would give this to Tommen. Um, next we have a uh, Samsora. Obviously, a Peach player. Peach now being near the very top of the meta, making Samsora in a prime position to possibly be a top 10 player himself. And Samsora will be going up against Nick C. And Nick C is someone that I feel like is specifically worth mentioning as someone to watch coming into the first new year of Smash Ultimate. Nick C is a Captain Falcon player, currently the number 25 seed in uh, Let's Make Moves. And Nick C may not be a well-known household name, but that's because Nick C just didn't travel a lot and did have great results with Captain Falcon in the previous game. And with the recent showing of fifth place at NYXL pop-up of out of 96 people, he's obviously proving that um, the Falcon meta is being pushed forward. And 
these kind of players seem to actually be going at the same rate or better than what we'd expect out of the Falcon players such as Fatality at the time. And they're really pushing this meta to show off the potential that we have. I'm going to give it to Sansor because of the fact that Peach is just an overwhelming character in this um, matchup. But Nixie, definitely someone to watch going forward in the Northeast area and overall if he is able to travel more. Next we have Ally. Third place to Super Splat Bros, going back to his Brawl main in Snake. Against John Numbers, the previous Wii Fit trainer from New York, finally coming back to switch up characters to a top tier here with Inkling. Now I can see the reason why Inkling is very good spacing tools, similar to Wii Fit trainer, but Inkling also has some very strong aggressiveness and very strong ability to take over matchups. I think that John Numbers could really push this character to a new height, but right now I'm giving it to Ally because of the fact that Ally has shown that Snake is a very viable character and could very possibly be a higher tier than many people seem to believe at the time. So that brings us over to DeBuzz versus Great Gonzalez. And when you're looking at DeBuzz versus Great Gonzalez, you're going to Consider the fact that you're dealing with completely different characters here. Great Gonzalez, a previous kind of Ness main, kind of Peach main mate, well not Peach main, Ness main kind of person, is now going Richter in the new game. A heavy spacer, trying to keep it back. Great Gonzalez has put up great results so far. Is currently seated 29th in this tournament, got first at Northeast Championship 19 out of 130, got first out of 23 at Spectrum Smash 75, got first out of 42 at Sector X Smash, and got second out of 75 at Prism number 7. Great Gonzalez has already pushed Richter so far after already not being sure if he wanted to keep playing Richter due to the bad recovery, and still continues to stick with it and get solid results. Great Gonzalez, another player I feel is actually seated pretty low in this tournament considering the results Great he's brought forth to this point, and definitely someone to watch in the future. On the other side, you're dealing with the Buzz, who placed top 4 at the NYXL event using Paul Tenna and Olimar. And with that, I feel that it's very um, difficult to gauge DeBuzz right now besides the fact that he will always be a top elite smasher. He's always very consistent, he never places really badly, and we don't know if that was maybe Rosa in the past, but it seems that this could be a very possible continuation of that with DeBuzz's Olimar looking like a possible top tier as well as bringing out the Palu, who also looks like a possible top tier or high tier character. So I'm going to give it to the Buzz in this situation. Then you have Captain Zack, the Bayo, versus Sinji, the Pac-Man. Captain Zack, I'm pretty sure this is coming out tournament for Smash Ultimate, so it'll be very interesting to see how the Bayo performs. Sinji, on the other hand, has attended a few Xeno Weeklies in New York, and has some good solid Pac-Man skill. Pac-Man doesn't seem to have changed in a significant way in this new game, at least not from the way Sinji is currently playing him. But it'll be interesting to see how um, Sinji continues to do as he attends bigger tournaments, considering the fact that Pac-Man could still possibly be a low tier due to the moveset. So I'm going to give it to Captain Zack in this situation. By the way, if you hear like that loud wind in the background, I'm really sorry. It is very windy, very me today as I've already mentioned so it has been kind of an issue throughout the day so far um, next we have Void who won Super Splat, Splat Bros with Pichu versus Frozen the Apollo I mentioned earlier Frozen currently part of the House of 3000 gang in New York is currently seated 37th and got 5th at the Xeno Weekly that happened just this past week on what I believe was I don't want to get their date wrong but I think it's Wednesday, could be Tuesday, pretty sure it's Wednesday though, um, but should be Frozen, another player I feel should be watched, um, but I do think Void with the Pichu will take the matchup. Next we have SVX, the Mewtwo versus Mr. E, the Marth, Mr. E doing well at the Xeno Weekly so far, consistently getting in that top 8 area. Um, SVX, the Mewtwo, I thought I read something that he might retire, but it seems like he's still he's still going strong and is good to go. Paying for a lot of travel, a young kid, only 16. Um, has a lot of potential though with the Mewtwo, bringing it back in this game. And I will give it to SDX because I feel like Mr. E falters very often against top players and people within his region. SDX has a high possibility of taking this game and Mr. E 
has, I feel like, a mentality that kind of messes with him because he knows of these flaws in his play um, dealing with certain opponents that could really hold him back continuing in the Smash Ultimate. I'm not going to talk about um, all of these bottom games, um, otherwise known as the loser's bracket, in great detail, but I will just kind of mention a few of them as there are players that I feel are worth mentioning. So, um, I will mention Deli, the uh, Pokemon trainer, and Deli is a worth mentioning because Deli comes in as the number 113th seed in this tournament. And I feel that that is extremely underseeded in this circumstance. I understand a lot of players can, uh, it's very hard to seed a bracket of this size, and I completely respect that. But um, Delhi at seed number 113 has got 9th out of 42 at Sector X Smash, 9th out of 74 at um, the CN Back Airs number 167 in Pennsylvania, and he's gotten 17th out of 136 at the Northeast Championship number 19, also whole held in Pennsylvania, which I attended. Um, and he has a very strong potential to make it out of his pool, I think. And I, he's currently the number 8 seed in his pool alone. And I expect him to make it out over Angel Cortez, a very popular player from the previous games as a Diddy Kong in Brawl and Smash 4. And I expect him to beat Player 4 here. I'm um, Player 4, part of the Sinai, um, the Sinai team. Um, Sinai, very uh, popular in the New England area as well as in the New York area as they spread, collecting players such as Scott, Glare, and Dawn. And on top of that, Player 4, obviously. But I do expect Delhi to take this matchup. Um, another one worth mentioning, in my opinion, is Soan. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, Soan, actually an Ike player. Ike looking very strong in this meta, very similar to Krom in the kind of spacing tools and up air, so many combos, forward air, down air, it all looks really good. The recovery brings a bit of struggle, but besides that, looks like a very strong character in the meta. And Soan is the number 40 seed coming into this tournament, and is got second at Aeon Smash Ultimate number 2 out of 118, and got third out of 87 at Aeon Smash Ultimate 1, including wins over players such as Raptor, the well-known Yoshi player. Um, I feel that uh, Soan has real potential with Ike to really push the Ike meta forward at the time. He really seems like one of the prominent Ikes to watch out for. So I'm going to have so I'm beating Goblin from Florida, the Roy, in that um, game. Um, looking further down, I want to mention this uh, Vinny versus Lemon Tea. I expect Vinny to win this matchup, even though I don't know who Vinny's playing as, solely because Vinny has a certain level of skill. But um, Lemon Tea is a wolf player who is, um, wolf I feel like a very popular character in the Northeast region right now, especially in the uh, Connecticut area where I live. I think there's like five or six pretty prominent wolf mains already in that area. And um, Lemon Tea, another wolf main, number nine, 89 seed going into this tournament, and is number 5th, got 5th out of 23 at Spectrum Smash, 75. Got 13th out of 75 at Prism number 7. And got 17th out of 62 at Spectrum Smash, 74. Lemon Tea has done a very good job of um, proving that he probably deserves to be higher seed than this, but just due to the lack of prominence, it's understandable that this is the reason why um, Lemon Tea hasn't mo moved forward. And um, yeah, so watch out for Lemon Tea in the future. I am also going to mention Jack at this point, the number 56 seed and Captain Falcon player. Uh, he got 17th out of 96 at NYXL, 49th out of 61 at Nino Saga, so a bit of a hard um, drawback. Um, and then third out of 73 at TCN Japes. So Jack has another Captain Falcon player, similar to Nixie, who has put up really strong results already. Captain Falcon, kind of tough with the recovery and current moveset, but has so much combo potential and kill early potential that these players who um, weren't really prominent with Captain Falcon in Smash 4 are really coming forth in Smash Ultimate with this great moveset that is really helping some of them. You just can't keep playing Captain Falcon like people have used to been playing him in Smash 4. And that's been a big talk about a lot of characters at this point, is that don't play it like it's Smash 4. 
and some people don't get this into their head, and some people completely realize it, completely switch the mindset, and are amazing players already coming into the early meta. Though I do like Jack, I really do like Ling Ling. Um, Ling Ling, a peach, ma a peach main from the Connecticut area, similar to the Smash 4 um, genre, and is got second out of 63 at Synthesis 3, as well as second out of 110 at Synthesis 2, and also got 13th out of 96 at NYXL. So really good results so far within his region, as well as at a more major event. So I expect Ling Ling to um, take this over Jack and possibly be someone who goes pretty deep in the bracket. So looking over, um, Mr. E versus Earth Bounty, I'm giving it to Mr. E. Uh, Frozen versus Delhi, this will be where Delhi's um, run falls to an end and Frozen um, continues forth his own run. Captain Zack versus So On, I think So On ends here. Great Gonzalez versus Venom, Great Gonzalez moves on against Venom's Ken. We got a. Um, I'm going to scroll down a bit just so you can see it a bit better. Uh, there, that should be a bit better. I'm realizing my camera is slightly in the way, but that should fix the problem. Um, so we also have uh, John Numbers versus Marshall. Marshall being a Bowser. I expect Numbers to continue. Um, Nick C versus Cassius. I have Nick C beating uh, Cassius's snake. Um, ZD versus Vinny. I have Vinny taking that over ZD. And uh, Dill versus Ling Ling, I will have Ling Ling be taking that. So now we have a uh, Mr. E versus Frozen. I expect Mr. E to take that. Um, two people I believe have played each other before, and I think Mr. E took previous sets. Um, Captain Zach versus Greg Gonzalez. I'm gonna go with Zach um, solely because of just ability to play Smash games. Um, John Numbers versus Nick C. I'm gonna be going with John Numbers and the Inkling at this point. Since they are from similar regions, I assume they have familiarity with each other, and I think John Numbers is just a better overall player. Um, Vinny versus Ling Ling. I do expect Ling Ling to win this matchup and move forward. Um, Ling Ling, very strong Peach, as I've mentioned. I really think Peach is good in this meta, possibly top five. Just something to keep in mind. Um, looking back up, Light versus Tommen. I have Light taking it, very strong Smash Ultimate player. Sam Sora versus Ally. I am going to give this to uh, Sam Sora. I feel Sam Sora is just worth mentioning, the number 8 seed in this pool, and also got first out of 135 at Blitz 2.0 in Florida, beating 8-Bitman and Mute Ace in the process. Sam Sora has proven to be a very strong opponent already, and I'm excited to continue his performances against Ally in this situation. The Buzz vs. Sinji, a classic New York matchup, I'm sure you'll be seeing plenty as the Smash Ultimate meta develops, I expect DeBuzz to take this one. And um, Void versus SDX, I am currently saying Void because Void's Pichu is outrageously good. Um, looking back down, we're going to have a uh, Ally versus Mr. E. I expect Ally to take that one pretty cleanly. Um, Tom versus Captain Zack, the battle of two possible Bayonettas right here, already making them fight each other. Great job, Smash. And um, I expect Tommen to take that one, um, since Tommen just has more experience actually playing at um, events. Uh, for SDX v. John Numbers, I expect SDX to take this one. Um, John, really good player, but SDX seems to have reached another skill level. And I don't think John Numbers' inkling is as developed yet as some of the other inklings out there. And I feel like that's something that can be very abused by players. Um, and finally, we have a uh, Sinji versus Ling Ling. I think this is where Ling Ling's run finally ends at a, uh, I believe that is a 17th place. So that would be a pretty good performance for Ling Ling at this large event. And I expect Sinji to make it in the top 16 with the Pac-Man. So um, Ally versus Tommen, I'm taking Ally just because of that, that Brawl Snake is just so scary. And even if Snake is mid-tier or something else, Right now, Snake is top tier because people just don't know how to play against Snake. If you're a non-brawl player, you just a lot of people just don't know how to handle it until they have actual experience with it. And me being one of those people, I haven't really played a Snake yet, so I really don't know the matchup either. I can just tell from people's past reactions and from what's going on that this is a new level of play that is going to have to be learned. Um, SDX versus Sinji, I expect SDX to take it, and just because I don't feel like Pac-Man would be very good in the matchup against Mewtwo still. And um, 
but going back to the top, Light versus Samsora. I'm going to say Samsora takes it with the Peach. Samsora and Light have played in the past, and I believe Samsora has the set counts in uh, Smash 4, and I expect that to continue here, at least for the start, as they both play their characters from Smash 4, respectively. Um, then we have uh, Debuzz versus Void. I'm actually going to choose Void for this one. Now, Debuzz, a very strong player, always places really high, but Void has come out with this Pichu, and I honestly makes me believe that Pichu could be better than Pikachu, and could even possibly be number one. And I say this very lightly as to say that it may not be true, but just from what I am seeing in the meta so far, Pichu as a whole, not just through Void, has already proven a very high level of play and has more results than Pikachu. Now, I don't know if that's just because Pichu players are going out more the start, Pikachu players aren't, ECM just hasn't gone to a lot of events yet, but the Pichu just looks incredibly gifted and strong and a character that could be a very high top tier. And I expect Void to take this over to Buzz regardless of what the buzz goes between his Olimar or his Palu. Um, and on loser side, we have a the buzz versus Ally. I expect the buzz to take this over Ally, um, just because I feel the buzz has some very strong top tiers and has the mind to work around Ally's movement. And then Light over SDX. Light, I just feel is such a prominent player in this game. Um, I'm going to take a roughly um, 45 second, one minute break. I just need to go get some water before I go into this uh, C1 pool we have coming up. So please give me a second and I will be right back. And we are back. I just had to grab some water, make sure I stay hydrated. I don't want to continuously voice crack during this. Um, so we're going to move on to the C1 pool, so the other side of top 64. Um, and in doing so, we're going to start with um, Nairo versus Rags. Nairo now playing Palu as ZSS has been seriously nerfed in um, this new game. Rags, the MDVA player, sticking with Meta Knight. Um, in this new rendition, I expect Nairo to take it, though Rags playing Meta Knight is just really scary in general. Still has some of those good combos of killing at early percent, and it's just an overall frightening character. Um, next we have a, what I believe might be a double Mario matchup in Anti vs. Dark Quizzy. Um, Anti, I'm not 100% sure on his current character. Um, he seems to really like Lucario a lot, which would be um, a really unique to see. And I'd really love to see Anti really test out the Lucario a bit more. I'm sure you'll see it within this bracket at some point because I just can't imagine him not trying out the Lucario since how much he loves Lucario's movement. Um, but in this Mario Mario matchup, I feel like Dark Wizzy has a bit more knowledge of Mario so far going into this match ultimate meta. And that could lead to Dark Wizzy beating Anti, um, which would be a um, pretty big upset to see. Um, Cosmos, previous Corn main in the previous game, the OG Naifu, the one who rose above the rest. Um, very strong with his Inkling in this game. It is the reason why everyone hates Inkling at this point, and I gotta kind of hate Cosmos for that because we gotta keep the Inkling meta to ourselves. But um, I really think that um, Inkling has some very high top 5 potential. Um, potential. I, I honestly think Inkling's number 7 right now on my tier list, but. Um, could possibly move up or down. I feel like Inkling's a lot harder to play than some people believe, and has a lot of gimmicks that um, can be easily avoided, such as Roller can be avoided. 
and um, also dealing with ledge guarding can be avoided. Um, but uh, I expect Cosmos to beat Suarez, Suarez being the uh, Yoshi and um, in the New Jersey area, and uh, move on. Um, Mars versus Mars is ZSS, as he continues to play ZSS, regardless of ZSS's new low-tier ability, versus Raptor, another Yoshi of the um, New Jersey area. I expect Mars to take this one, as Mars has already proven some high ZSS uh, prominence with uh, his second placement at Let's Make Moves, the new New England Monthly which um, takes place in Waltham, Massachusetts. And if anyone, if anyone wants to ever give me a ride to that, I'm looking for one from uh, Southern Connecticut. So please uh, let me know if anyone's interested in providing you with that. Uh, as the next one, I believe, comes toward the back end of January, I believe the 28th or 29th. Um, anyways, moving on, we have um, Tweak versus, Tweak's Crom versus uh, Vanilla's Greninja. Um, I'm really liking Vanilla right now, and that's because Vanilla just recently got first at the Xeno Weekly over Light, um, currently the number 35 seed, and has been talking about how Greninja is a top tier, just like how Japan seems to per se it, and keeps telling himself that you're not going to think Greninja is a low tier anymore after he makes top 8. And you know what? I might believe in Vanilla in this. Um, but I do expect Tweak to take it with the Krom. Tweak's already proven to be such a dominant player in this game, and that will continue with the, uh, loft house that they have that's been really dominating opponents. Um, next we have two more Chromes, actually, in Shoyo James and Matty G. Um, Matty G is someone that I want to really mention as the number 19 seed in this tournament, due to a first at Push the Limit with wins over Mars and Light, and could really be a prominent, um player in this game. You might remember him from a period of playing Cloud in the old game in which he did very well. So I expect this sword fighter power to continue and Matty G to upset Shoyo James. Um, next we got Larry Lur versus Jen. So Fox v um, Jen's new Palu or possibly the um, I believe he's also utilizing Ken. So just something to keep in mind. I do expect Larry Lur to take it just solely based off of skill in previous games. Um, next we have uh, Laid. Um, formerly known as Kool-Aid, now just Laid. Um, I'm not 100% sure with Kool-Aid's character, but I believe it's Sheik. Um, continuing from the old game, Sheik not as good as she once was, so we'll see how that's handled. And also Jackal, I believe Sonic in the previous game from the Northeast region. And going Pokemon Trainer um, in this new game. Very strong character, I believe another top tier, very big character to watch out for. But I do expect Laid to take this matchup. With uh, being the number 11 seed, Laid was, uh, got first out 59th at Batter Up Smash, as well as top 8 at Let's Make Moves. So really proving a lot of potential. So before I talk about Loser's Bracket, I, um, there's a uh, follower count down in the uh, left side. I don't know which side's my left side of um, the screen. I would really appreciate follow. I'm working on Twitch affiliate and um, I would just really love to have followers and be able to work my way toward the goal of getting a hundred followers. I'm trying to increase my viewers. Streaming right now is inconsistent since I am in St. Croix, but it will become more consistent as we approach the end of January. I believe January 22nd, Tuesday, January 22nd is when my streams will start becoming more consistent. I'm planning on streaming six days a week right now with the exception of Wednesdays because Wednesdays are just really busy for me right now um, with school work being a full-time college student part-time worker and trying to uh, stream on top of that and also attend Smash Ultimate events Wednesday is a very difficult day for me to um, pull off um, streaming it, it may still happen depending on the day it could always happen late at night but i um, not confident in my Wednesday schedule right now but I will be posting a um, future schedule sometime within the next month. I think I have my times figured out, but I'm waiting to hear a couple more things back from school about when I'll have assignments, when I'll have activities, and it'll obviously be me trying very hard to consistently stream um, six times a week. I mean, six is a lot. I mean, some people stream full time and they're making money off it. I'm just trying to be coming and up, up and coming player. And uh, and streamer and 
that's difficult to do right now, especially since I don't have the numbers to support myself off of Twitch. So any real help is really appreciated right now. Just giving a follow is all you can really do. Once I um, am Twitch affiliate and stuff, I can get those subs going, get the subscribe button, and we'll be on the move. So um, yeah, please support me with a follow if you um, like, or even if you don't like what I'm doing. Just give me the follow, just turn off notifications, don't pay attention to me. Um, or, or just spread the word. Um, follow me on Twitter, Mr. Purple CT would be, be absolutely amazing. And um, you can always message me on my Twitter. I'm always, the DMs are always open if you just want to slide on in there and uh, ask me any questions. Um, if you don't know, I'm in Inkling and Nesk Homing. I'm working on a Palu, K. Rule, and also Game & Watch as possible secondary characters. And, um, yeah, so, um, please just try to follow me any way you can. I do have a YouTube channel. I, um, think it just is Justin Ellis right now, which is my actual name. Um, all of my, uh, videos are going to probably be uploaded to there. Um, I'm hoping I'll see after this stream if it actually did record. I think I set it to record, so hopefully that works. Um. But yeah, so now we're going to uh, move into this uh, loser's bracket a bit, talk a bit more about what to expect. Um, I'm not going to mention all of these, as I mentioned before, but there are a few that I feel are worth mentioning. I will say um, Pink Fresh the Bayo versus Phantom. Um, Phantom, formerly known as Aerial Ace, a former New England PR player. Um, currently seated 107, but got first out of 32 at Ultimate at Battlegrounds with um, a win over Ling Ling. So has already um, beaten a high level player and a matchup that I believe, I don't even know who Phantom plays, probably plays very heavily into Ling Ling's favor. So impressive job by Phantom already coming out with good results. Um, but I do expect Pink Fresh to take that matchup. Um, other than that, I want to mention Wishes is and Inkling, that if you follow Inkling, it, you're following people like Cosmos, you're following John Numbers, um, Armada is making videos right now on Inkling that are probably worth watching, uh, Nakat's a decent Inkling, but Wishes is kind of the underdog Inkling I don't think a lot of people are talking about yet. Currently the number 30 seed from the Pennsylvania region, got 33rd out of 96 at NYXL, which is kind of the bad result out of these. But he got first out of 62 at Spectrum Smash 74, and first out of 61 at Xenosaga XX, which was a pretty big event. So Wish is definitely an inkling to watch, and I expect him to take it over Beast, a Pokemon trainer who I actually played at Northeast Championship that eliminated me. That um is good, but I really think Wishes is another level up, as both are from the same region, and probably have playtime with each other before. Um, other than that... I think those are the big ones I wanted to talk about. So, going forward, I'll just talk about what other big ones I have. Um, I've got Jackal over Odyssey, um, Jen over Soul Arts. I don't know who Soul Arts plays. Uh, I think Ralphie plays Cloud still, but I do think Shoyo takes it. Um, I continue Vanilla to make the push here and beat Pink Fresh. Uh, I've got a Wishes over Raptor, I've got a Suarez over Stocktaker, Anti over Biddy, and Rags over GWJ. I've got Jackal continuing the Pokemon Trainer run, taking over Jen. Vanilla beating Shoyo James, beating that Krong, continuing fourth. I've got um, Wishes beating Suarez to Yoshi, and I've got Rags pulling off an upset here over Anti due to the Meta Knight strength. Um, I also have on winner side now, going back to that, Nairo versus Dark Wizzy. I have Nairo taking it. Um, just a different level of play. Cosmos versus Mars. Inkling's top tier will beat Mars. Um, Tweak versus Maddie G. I expect Tweak to take that in the Chrom Ditto. Um, Larry Lur versus Laid. Larry Lur getting second at Super Splat Bros. Hard to deny that. I expect Larry Lur to take it over Laid. Um, looking back down here, Mars versus Jackal. I am expecting Mars to take it with the ZSS. Um, though this could be a possible upset, I do like Jackal a lot with the Pokemon Trainer in this new game. Um, Dark Wizzy versus Vanilla. I expect Dark Wizzy to get eliminated here, actually. 
and allowing Vanilla to move into top 16 as a Greninja player, something you Americans should really watch out for. Um, Wade versus Wishes, so this is where my uh, heart is broken. I've got to say Wishes' run comes to an end as cool, as Laid makes top 16. Um, and Matty G versus Rags, I have Matty G winning it with the Chrome, making it into top 16. Um, Mars versus Vanilla, this is where I cut off Mars as well and let Vanilla per go even further with the Greninja. Um, Blade versus Matty G, I expect Matty G to win that. Matty G placing better at um, the uh, tournament that he went to um, with uh, not Let's Make Moves, but um, sorry, moment of pause. As I look through, I had to make a couple notes that I didn't forget all this, and all of a sudden I've lost Matty G. Push the limit. I probably mentioned uh, Lade's fifth place earlier as um, Let's Make Moves as well. I meant to say push the limit that Lade got top eight. Um, I do expect Matty G to win as he got a better result at push the limit. And Nairo versus Cosmos, I'm going to say Nairo is still beating up on his apprentice and takes that. And Tweak versus Larry Lur, I think Chrome is just a dominant matchup against Fox, and I will say Tweak takes that. And looking at losers, I expect Vanilla to make it into top 8 as he swears that he will with a win over Larry Lur. And uh, Cosmos to take it with the inkling over Matty G's Chrome, which will be a tough matchup nonetheless considering that this is a character that inkling does have disadvantage against. And that will bring us into top eight. With a uh, top eight, we have, I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit, Sam Sora versus Void and Nairo versus Tweak on winners and Buzz versus Light and Vanilla versus Cosmos on losers. I expect uh, Sam Sora and Void, I expect Void to win with the Pichu. And for Nairo and Tweak, I expect Nairo to win with the Palu. On loser side, the Buzz versus Light, another classic matchup you'll be seeing plenty in the Northeast region. I expect Light to take it over to Buzz and leave the Buzz at a seventh place, which probably won't be a great result for, in his opinion. And Vanilla versus Cosmos, this is where Vanilla's Greninja run will finally end, getting Vanilla seventh place. Next, you have Tweak versus Light. Light beating Tweak in um, the NYXL event. I expect to continue here as Light beats Tweak. Um, Sam Sora versus Cosmos. This is where the um, last inkling will fall as Cosmos will finish at fifth with Tweak. So Light versus Sam Sora. I expect Light to actually be double eliminated by Sam Sora in this tournament to finish at fourth. And Sam Sora to take it and continue onward with his Peach tirade to Nairo because Void will beat Nairo with the Pichu on winner's side of finals. And Nairo versus Samsora, I expect the Peach to upset the Palu and bring Void versus Samsora with Void ultimately taking it in what I believe will be a 8 or 9 game set after already playing in winner semis to make it um, a really great match between Void and Samsora. We can look at the final results down here as I have um, Void in first, Samsora second, Nairo third, Light fourth, Tweak and Cosmos at fifth. The Buzz and Vanilla at 7th, Ally SDX, Larry Lur and Matty G at 9th, and Tommen, Sinji, Mars, and Laid at 13th. Looking at the um, character placements, we have Pichu getting 1st, Peach getting 2nd, Palu getting 3rd, Fox and Pichu getting 4th, Chrome, DK, and Inkling getting 5th. Olimar, Palu, and Greninja getting 7th, Snake, Mewtwo, Fox, and Chrome getting 9th, and Bayo, Pac-Man, ZSS, and Sheik getting 13th. So you deal with 2 Pichus, 2 Palus, 2 Foxes, and 2 Chromes, and a Peach, DK, Inkling, Olimar, Greninja, Snake, Mewtwo, Bayo, Pac-Man, ZSS, and Sheik all in the top 16. 15 different characters, 16 players absolutely great to see with the new meta and that's about mostly what I have to say today um, I know this felt a bit rushed in the second half I really just did have a lot more to say about C1 pools as compared to B1 pools but nonetheless should make up to be a very interesting tournament um, I want to once again and I'm not done yet as I think I saw Sylvanas actually posted a new video, years of research, probably based off of the 
Salem and Armada controversy recently that I'd be very interested in watching, so I will probably stream my reaction to that live right now after I say this. But um, please make sure to follow me here, Mr. Purple SSB. Follow me on Twitter, Mr. Purple CT. Follow me on YouTube, probably find me under Justice Justin Ellis. If you don't find it that way, look up PK Throw Justin Ellis. It'll probably more likely come up that way, as this is the PK Throw show. And um, hopefully, as time goes on, I've already upgraded the stream a bit. I can hopefully upgrade the show a bit too, as well as my streaming in general when I get back. You can generally, you can definitely expect We Happy Few and Smash Bros when I get back. I don't know exactly what else to expect yet. Um, Kingdom Hearts is coming out soon. That might be a game that's worth buying, or I might get the Kingdom Hearts story up to um, with the nine games on it and play through all of that as another possible option. Um, also, I have Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle, which I have already played quite a bit of, but still have more to play. I have more of World of Light to play for, the, for Smash Ultimate, depending on if I finish it, um, and St. Croix off stream. I just don't know about that right now. Really sick I didn't bring my streaming equipment, but it happens. Um, but January 22nd is the big day to watch out for, and um, with that, I will now pull up the... Uh, YouTube in order to uh, view this video that Sylvanas released. Um, going to be very interesting to see your years of research, the Smash Ultimate trailer. After doing years of research, I concluded that Melee is not actually a Smash game. But somehow, there are two characters in this game that only existed in Melee. So now I've made it my mission to exterminate them. Who's that? That's far enough. What do you think you can help me Oh my god. Oh my god, stop. It's like you really just want you to smash yours. What? Anyone that stands in my way will die. Can you guys really protect me? Of course we can, it's our job! Oh shit, run! This is wild. Gotta stop this. This isn't right. The only reason you're trying to stop me is because you're misinformed. Hekata Koi! She did! Umazaka! Bakemono! Stop running! I'm just gonna blow you to little pieces. Not on my watch. Don't do no research. I'm thinking you actually know something about this game. I'm just doing sacrifice work. Yo, that was actually pretty uh, funny. Um, Sylvanas is all so much great stuff. Uh, make sure to give him a follow too. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty funny. Um, yeah, but that's about it for the stream. I really appreciate everyone uh, coming out today and um, helping make it another great stream. So uh, yeah, I'll hopefully be streaming for longer in the future this when I get back. But, uh, oh, from this stop! Track. I don't want a commercial. Anyways, have a great day, everyone. This is um, Justin Ellis, aka Mr. Purple with the PK throw, and please follow, subscribe, do all that good stuff. This will probably be on my YouTube later if I figure out if it's saved. And yeah, thank you, and have a good one.